Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Ash with the best build and runes possible. You should always look for an invade on Ash because her level one is insane with her perma slows on autos and AOE on her W. Unfortunately, our mid lane is AFK and our top lane is too cool for school. So we're not gonna be able to do that. For your best runes, take lethal tempo with presence of mind, bloodline with coup de grace, alongside biscuits for sustain. Realistically, your presence of mind, bloodline, and biscuits are all for sustain. And approach velocity, attack speed 80, and armor. Approach velocity is extremely important. If your teammates CC or slow the enemies, or if you slow them through any means, your autos, your W, your R, you move 15% faster towards them. So once you land a single slow on them, most champions can't get away from you. It's also a big reason why Ghost is exceptional on Ash, since once you've committed to a fight, you know you're going to win it. As long as your ghost is still activated by the time you get your kill or assist on an enemy champion, it will extend it by four to, I think it's seven seconds. It's like four to eight seconds, depending on your champion level. Plus ghost gets faster per champion level. Do keep in mind that if you run ghost, you, you need to play the laning phase a little bit slower and try not to do any crazy all-ins to the death because ghost itself doesn't actually do any damage. It's not like an ignite or using a heal. It, zero stats other than movement speed so it, it is okay to kind of play slow ash has really long auto attack range the only ad carry who outranges her level one is caitlin try to use that when they go in for their last hit if you can hit them without missing a minion then do it melee supports level one are weak for the most part if they don't have a hook like blitz is scary kind of thresh is scary pike is a little scary when their hook's ready to use but and Alistair, he can't do anything. Like, we're just gonna walk up, hit his AD carry, we outrange her, and we have a range support. You need to abuse them as much as you can, literally, before they're level two. Like, he shouldn't have stepped up. Okay, I flashed for it, it looked bad, but I didn't think Seraphine's auto was gonna finish him, but it did. They don't actually have heal, they went super aggressive and ran exhaust and uh, ignite there. Your W is a good auto reset. Do keep in mind with how the arrows spread, that the closer you are, the more arrows a single target will block, which can be, oh, rip, missed cannon. Stand closer to the minions if you can get away with that. It's easier to last it because your auto gets there faster. We're gonna go ahead and reset, as tempting as it is to poker underneath turret. I don't know where their jungler is, and Silas is typically a three camp red buff type of jungler. It's usually red buff and wraps Krug then ganks like a Ramus would do. So we don't want to overstay early on Ash. Boots are typically the way to go. Also get a control word. Mobility is super important on her. If you're faster than them, they can't get away. They die. It's that simple. Go ahead and get our Q next, then E. Max our W first. Q second and E last. Your Q is an auto attack reset. And you need to stack it up first. So by autoing champions or minions, monsters, you can get it up to four stacks. One stack per auto. The activation is an auto reset plus attack speed plus additional damage. Ash does more damage if she's already slowed the target recently. So if you've already hit them with an auto or a W or an R, your next auto attack speed out 74. We spaced this auto out too far, so that's 74. Now look, 74 into 81. A little bit more damage. Hit her with a W. He gets the double knockup. I'm going to swap into my Q. She's toasted. I'm on ghost extensions now right after I kill her. I'm on a potion as well. I don't think I can kill this guy, but I can make him take some damage. I'm taking a lot of minions though. Three range creeps is the equivalent of getting hit by... Just leave it. This wave's pushing to us. Pay attention after you get a kill, because this wave... Oh, wait, is it? Oh, I don't know. It looked like it was pushing to us, but their cannon died too fast. If their cannon was full health, we could have left the wave, come back, and it would have been pushed all the way to us, and it would have a huge minion advantage. But since their cannon died so fast, that's not really how it ended up. It is what it is. Slight uh, overreaction on my part, but it is something you want to look for. After you get a kill, you have the option to either trying to dump the wave to reset it underneath the turret. And they're trying to stop that right now. And they're taking a lot of damage for it. And Kaisa seems to perhaps not fully understand that concept of how to set up the freeze. So yeah, she's trying to break the freeze. To set up a freeze, you need the enemies to have four more ranged creeps in you. And then you can essentially hold the wave in place in your favor indefinitely. 
So yeah, something something to think about. So after a kill, you either push or you let it push to you, just depending on which wave you can tell has more minions, which wave is healthier, etc. Go ahead and get another point in our W. We have biscuits. Don't use them unless you're below half health or half mana. They heal you your health and mana more the more you're missing. Tier 2 boots rush on Ash is the way to go, especially against melee supports. Then we're going to be looking for a shield bow into rage blade into wit's end to be tanky. If you don't want to be tanky, you can go full crit. Crack in, into uh, Phantom Dancer into IE. It's fine. Ash crit build is viable. Her on hit build's viable. On hit, Ash is a bit tankier. But uh, you could argue our front line is sufficient. The reason why I'm still going to push for Shield Bow is they have Rengar and Silas, and I don't want to get one shot bursted before I can shred down and slow. See how they have more range creeps than me and the waves in the middle of the lane? Both waves are reinforcing at the same time. This is obviously coming to us so we can slow down. Silas is dead. I didn't need to waste my E there. This guy can't step up there. Hit him with an auto attack W. We are tanking their range creeps here, but we have enough of a gold advantage that it's fine. Keep an eye on the minion HP. Try to look on the mini map whenever you can. It's challenging, but it gives you a lot of information. Like if you see multiple people missing and you're... You think, wait a minute, I'm pretty easy to kill, then you might want to back up or change how you're positioned to where you think they'll be coming from. Right now, we're not that gankable, because even if we get pushed off the wave, if multiple of them come down here, we can just back up, let the wave come to us, and we won't miss anything. We need to thin this out. This is too many minions. They have way more than four range creeps. They have five range creeps plus a melee minion here. So now Silas is coming to try to break this. Her range are in the front, so they're going to die fast, but range creeps do so much damage compared to melees. And even if they're one health, they stay alive for a while since they're typically farther back. I could flash for this, honestly. Seraphine's playing a little too far up. I flashed the Alistair's. Knock, auto attack, Q reset. Ron Ghost, so we're moving really fast. Notice how we're able to run him down there since we have double mobility sums. So if you have a gold advantage, HP advantage, or your jungler's ganking, having double mobility sums is kind of cracked. It doesn't mean there's never a time you should take flash or... Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't mean that there's never a time you shouldn't be taking exhaust or heal. The thing is, though, for ultimate carry potential, having ghost gives it to you. We have the wave pretty much crash. She doesn't have enough of a minion advantage to freeze it. She also doesn't seem like she's comfortable with freezing. A lot of players don't. They don't understand the four ranged rule, which is the enemies don't have four more range creeps in you. You can't hold a perma freeze. Eventually your wave will keep reinforcing quicker and dump into the enemies, whether it's two waves or three waves from now. So a lot of players don't understand that. So they just kind of end up permanent pushing, especially if you're not there, which is really good for you. If you're trying to learn the bot lane position, because it's a huge knowledge gap. Don't try to freeze if they don't have four more range creeps than you. And you can slow push. You don't Just because you know you can't freeze doesn't mean you have to immediately just try to dump the wave as fast as you can. I'm underneath my turret so he can't engage here. Launcher with the R. Just get autos on this guy. I'll attack W. Try to move in between our autos here. They all die. It's okay if we miss some minions. It's bad to miss a minion just to hit the enemies with a single auto attack. But if you can find an all in and you miss a minion or two, it doesn't matter. It's just, oh, I want to hit her with an auto when she goes to the last hit and then I'm going to back off, but I'm missing a minion to do it. It's those situations. It's usually not worth it because you can prep the wave in a way to where you're getting to hit them without having to miss something to do it. We'll launch an E. When your push is the best time to use E because that's when you're most vulnerable. So we see the Silas here. And as you see, it lines up with the enemy's jungle and you can launch the E through literally their whole jungle. I'll attack Q. So we take one turret shot. Not a huge deal. We kite out of range. He's going to lose all of his health. He's dead. Unless he has flash. I'll attack W. I'm comfortable with the turret range so I know how close I can stand. Most attacks and abilities in League have a travel time or a cast time. So even though I was technically in range when he started that, I was close enough to the outer range of the turret to where I could step out. I'll attack W. We're going to hit a Biscuit. She can't engage because I have the Seraphine heals going off here. Ash can play with aggressive supports like Leona Nautilus, or she can play super 
kind of sustain supports. She's super versatile like that. Got him with my R. Ooh, I'm actually dead. That Silas damage was nutty. We do get the kill on him, but they wiped us. I wasn't really paying attention to that ward, so that's my bad. Ash R does magic damage, even though her whole kit does physical. It's an interesting fun fact. Getting close to shield bow. Still have a CS advantage on Kais, but man, her getting that shutdown kind of sucks. Silas jungle was dangerous there. So much damage. He landed a big R as well. I think he got the Seraphine R and roasted us there. Our ghost is back up. We can look for an all in. We still have gold advantage over her, even with her getting the shutdown. We can't technically freeze from here because the minions are relatively equal HP and it's closer to our turret to where our next wave will get here way sooner and the wave will snowball towards them. So I'm not going to even try to freeze this. So I'll just push it real fast, especially since Alistair is roaming. Launch our E across the map, let it end in the enemy's jungle. We need to find him. Kaisa looking away. She wasn't on lock screen there or she tabbed out. We're going to punish her for that. We see Silas's top side, so now we can play hyper aggressive. If you're going to miss a minion, just stop autoing. Just walk around calmly and be as close to it as you can. It makes it easier to last hit. Or press the S key and just stand there right by it. Seraphine's taking a bit of damage. I'm going to keep poking them with my Ws. Presence of Mind is giving me mana back every single time I hit the enemy champions with anything. Could have potentially killed her with R there. I wasn't really looking for it. It would have been close though. R is only 200 damage right now. She'll resist roughly 30% of it based off her base magic resist. Like me, I have 20% 20, 20 resist right now. So she would have resisted at about 30%. Launch an E through because we're pushed up. It's the best time to do it. If you're already under your turret, there's really usually not a need for it. Double ping their jungler. I guess we don't have to take the wave right now. Auto attack, Q reset to shove. You should never really use your Q to fight minions unless you're trying to dump it because they backed or they're dead. Because it's a big mana cost and um, not a big, but it's a notable mana cost. Plus it leaves you vulnerable because it can wait till right when your Q ends then all in you type of thing. Versus if you're leaving it at four stack, you can activate it whenever you want. Auto attack, W reset, auto attack Q, that type of thing. All right, let's get our next point in that. I'll launch her with an R here in a second. I'll attack W. Don't feel like you have to do long range snipes on Ash. It's incredibly tempting, but it's generally ineffective. As cool as it is, it's just kind of a silly thing to do because everybody on both teams, including yourself, is going to be making so many mistakes all the time that you can you if you just hold on to your R for like 10 seconds. Oh yeah, I guess we need to rotate now. After you take the enemy's outer turret, usually send your mid laner bot. That's the meta. If you don't, then uh, you just kind of waste time and then they can shut you down. So for example, let's say me and Seraphine are pushed after taking this turret. Where do we retreat to if we get ganked? Our retreat route is so far away that we could literally just die to a normal gank because there's nowhere to really go to. Instead, we can go mid, keep our shutdown gold up and not throw it. So right now, if she kills us, she gets an extra 150. Oh, I don't like that. I'll attack Q reset. I'll attack W. I'm going to flash that. I'll attack Q. I'm moving really fast. As long as I don't get hit by a big Cinder stun there, she's dead. Her R is not going to kill me. I'm on Ghost, so I'm moving nearly 500 movement speed, which is basically a Jana with Boots of Mobility. Max Zephyr. Ghost is super dangerous. Plus, we'll be moving 15% faster than that. Okay, I'll attack QR. Down he goes. Kite this guy out. I'll attack W. I'll attack Q. Kite him out. Down he goes. Make sure you're, in, or I should say, try not to cancel your auto attacks with a W. Try to get off a full auto, then W. Because it, if you're canceling an auto to W, you're missing out on a lot of damage. I don't want to fight her. She could actually have killed me there if she has her R. I don't think she does because she just used it before she died earlier. 
but she has a full item right there do you see that kraken slayer plus tier two boots i'm tier two boots no full item so in theory there if you did have r even though i'm a level up i probably can't solo her not have to try to run if, you're t if you see your teammates doing something that just doesn't make sense don't ping them because that sounds like you're yelling at them from their perspective ping what you're trying to explain like for me i'm saying hey i don't want to do that i reset so that way she didn't go in thinking i was staying because i didn't have r i didn't have my gold spent i'm literally two full items now <laughs> you shouldn't sit on so much gold like i was doing it's a bad habit the rule of thumb is is if you can't solo the enemies and you're sitting on a lot of gold you need to back but if you can still solo them and you're getting value on the map by staying like good value then you can stay but in that case they literally have more items than me you might as well reset and that's it they quit they had enough all right we'll go ahead and do a part two because that was so short i'll see you guys there yo what's going on guys welcome back to part two first things first we want to invade the problem is their level one is insane they have karthus and scion on the same team so we we don't really want to invade that it's a bad idea <laughs> even though ash has really the best invade in the game scion's level one's great and so is karthus so even though ash's level one is 10 out of 10 they have two 8 out of 10 level ones so we don't really want to mess with that for rune same thing we have lethal tempo presence of mind with bloodline coup de grace biscuits with approach attack speed 80 and armor standard standard if they have lots of assassins you should really go for exhaust instead of ghost things like zed he point and clicks on your face with r not much counterplay you got to press exhaust on him so you don't die Zillion's perfect though, man. Ash can play with any support in the game. Seriously. Zillion, Thresh, Blitzcrank, Pike, Sona, Soraka. Like, it doesn't matter. She can play with anything. Now, anything that can, like, tank for her or speed her up is ideal. But, uh, really, pretty much every champion fits that description. Is the truth. If a champion can't tank, it usually has a speed up or a heal for you. Like, Soraka heals you, Zillion speeds you up, Karma speeds you up, and shields you. Usually leave at 138. At 138, you need to leave so you can get the first three minions. These guys are playing it slow. Three health potion, that's so cheesy. That means she's going to have a lot more HP than us if we trade a lot. So we did miss one melee minion already. We got here a little on the later side. Looks like Zillion's kind of trying to push. I'm honestly fine with being pushed in though early on versus a lane like this. I'm going to let this minion take some damage and then I'll auto it. They had too much health. I'll W that. I also got some damage on them and all the minions. Zillion's really weak early on. You need to recognize how useful is your support going to be and try to minimize your losses in these early type of trades. Like there, Zillion's being way too aggressive because he's kind of useless early on. <laughs> like level one is not his strong suit. Oh, I missed that minion rip. Boy, we are missing a lot of minions right now. Got it. Auto attack QW. Hit you on that, buddy. Got it. Very nice. Dillian actually helped with that one. Cool. Your supports may or may not help you last hit. I wouldn't worry about too much about it, because even if you're down CS... The enemies will eventually make a mistake, so as long as you're focused, you should be able to punish that. We'll go ahead and use a biscuit because we're really low on mana. Get her with an auto attack. Get her with another auto, push her off my support. We're missing CS right now, but I don't have much choice with how they're playing. I kind of have to do something here. I'm gonna pop her with my Q. She took so much damage for that. I have the minions here. She's dead. If she doesn't, yeah, she's dead. Samira healed late. Auto attack Q reset. So that whole time we were getting pressure. They felt like they were winning lane because they were pushing the way faster than we were, which doesn't necessarily mean you're winning lane. I'm gonna walk past that. Get her with that auto. She can't keep up. I gotta reset though. Oh, Zillion got it. That's sick. When you're having to deal with enemy skill shots, don't keep your movement linear. You need to make it semi unpredictable, but in a way to where you're still going to where you want to go. So there, for example, I hit him with an auto immediately and then I ran, even though my next auto was ready, I just kept moving. That way we wouldn't get hit. Hopefully that makes sense. 
So you don't have the auto every single time your auto's up in different situations. Because if they have lots of skill shots, it can actually just get you killed because they get into the rhythm of it. It's kind of like music. They perceive it and then they play at it. But then if you change, change it up, then they'll miss or they'll have to guess. And odds are if they're guessing, they're going to miss. Like that Karthus, he basically didn't land anything on us. She crashed this wave. I can't freeze it. It's too many minions. If I walk off to block it, it'll crash. If it's more than 10 minions, you can't really freeze it when it's this close to your turret. I'm standing close. Auto attack. The oh, oh, I needed to auto that one sooner. Oh, well, I'm going to hold on to my E for a little bit. Our wave will push out because the minions are neutral in terms of HP, basically, but it's way closer to my turret. So the next wave will essentially force it to push to them. But she's starting to smash them. So we're chilling. It's going to come to us now because she just started autoing Perma for no reason. Her main abilities are on cooldown. It's a good time to trade. Launch E into their jungle. She exhausts. One, one more auto. She's dead. So what's going on there is Samira didn't want to fight, but her support did. And her support wasn't willing to concede. And against Ash, it's a death sentence. Because once Ash hits you with a single slow, unless you have insane mobility, you're not going to get away. And that's why she died. Because she went in for a trade when Samira knows that I have a gold advantage because I had a kill. And Samira doesn't have a kill. So Samira's like, you know what? Ash has minion advantage. And it was closer to our turret kind of at the time. Like, why would we all fight this? And the Samir was right. Renata was wrong. It happens, though. Miscommunication. Go ahead and launch this through their jungle. Your E is free. We're below half mana, so we'll use a biscuit. Ideally, you want to be below half health and half mana. It looks like Karthus is here. Karthus path right into us. I don't necessarily want to stay. Assume her backs. Oh, cool. Zillion stopped her back. It's hilarious. Zillion just killed her. That's so troll. <laughs> that I Samira went in, but she probably thought Renata was still there, but Renata just ran away to go fight somebody else. That's hilarious. That's the most challenging thing about bot lane, guys, is if you and your support on an absolutely different page then by default you have to play more defensive because if you're playing more defensive worst case scenario you're just basically not going to be getting kills but if you're being overly offensive and your support doesn't want to you're going to get yourself killed so it's basically you miss out on kills versus you dying is the difference and that's what their bot lane needs to just play more defensive now and be patient r is up ghost is up we crash the wave this will push to us 100% it will. Let's go for Shield Bow again. I really, really like Shield Bow. They have a Kiana plus Karthasar. I want to survive. So I know this is going to push to us because it's so close to their turret. And the minion numbers are even. It was 6 on 6. Even if their minions were lower, it doesn't matter. 6 on 6, close to the turret, it pushes. The only way it doesn't is if my wave has 4 or more ranged minions in them. That's the rule. 4 or more ranged minions. So they have, yeah, this is going to hard push into us. She has uh, three more range creeps and my wave's getting decimated. So she's also smashing the wave repeatedly. I need to thin this out. I'm going to walk her down auto attack Q. I'm going to smack her with R. Down she goes. Auto attack Q. She can't use her wind wall in the middle of her R, but she can start it and then R. But she kind of just held on to it, and I held on to my R. So that's all I needed to do in that situation since I was high HP. She didn't have the kill pressure to just pop her R and immediately kill me. So where I could just chill on mine and use it hyper defensively. I have a feeling these guys are going to quit because their support and AD carry clearly, clearly aren't getting along. We don't want these minis to block our whole volley. A target only takes damage from a single arrow from your W. So if if one minion or one champion's blocking your full W, that's bad. Auto attack Q reset. Zillion R's me. This might actually go bad. Ooh, that's good. 
So th I was getting a little nervous there because Samira's full stack conquer, but at the same time, I'm kind of full stack lethal tempo, so we're chilling. She couldn't come back to lane there. She had to give up that wave and back off and wait for her support or jungler. If people are blocking you off from your turret and there's more of you, more of them than you, you have, you got to go somewhere else. It's her support's fault for not being here, but at the same time, her support making that mistake doesn't mean she should make the mistake of trying to walk through us. She needed to, to do the right thing based off of the current conditions. Ultimately, staying alive is the most important thing, guys. Even if you're not getting CS, you're going to get XP. Just going to W flash that. I don't want to mess with that. that was, it was getting too messy. I think we might actually be able to do this. Samir still doesn't have very good items. Hit her with an auto. I backed off because I didn't want to get hit by her skill shot. Backed off again. Auto attack W, auto attack Q reset. She's waiting for me to R so she can win wall. I pop her with R now. Ooh, wait, I didn't have mana for R. I actually ran out of mana. I couldn't use my R there. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Because if I did have the mana, she was absolutely screwed. Hash R does cost a lot of mana. Her Q, medium cost, W, medium high, and then R. Sheesh, 100 mana. My bad. Not keeping track of that. We'll kill her when she comes back. After Shield Bow, we're going to be going for Rage Blade. And their team has only one Magic Damage Champion, so I don't necessarily want to go Wit's End. We could instead go for Runons into IE. Wit's End is a defensive item on Ash. You don't have to get it. It's only if they have a lot of threatening Magic Damage. Maybe if they had an Akali. Something that could put more consistent pressure on us. She's a full item because she didn't get tier 2 boots. I'm faster than her, but she has shield bone. I don't. I'm trying to bait out their skill shot by getting in their face. We have minion advantage here. If they try to fight us, auto attack can reset W. If they tried to fight us there... Oh, Zillion's going to die. Huh. All right. It's just a little too aggressive there. Oh, yeah. I forget what I was saying after seeing that. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So if they try to fight us there, three range creeps is the equivalent of one D-Blade AD carry auto attack. It's a lot of damage. So we have three range minions and a cannon. So it was like we had two AD carries because the cannon's basically an AD carry D-Blade auto as well. Launch my E through, making sure I'm not getting wrecked by their jungler in a moment his blue buff's coming up so most likely he's not going to be here so yeah he's top side i think renata got that kill which is great i would rather her get it than the samir of course can get my shield bow is she really gonna stop my back please 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 please, please. nice get roasted when you can, you do want to get the blue ward. The blue ward's best. That's why they don't let you start it at the game. You only need level 9 for it. And you can have it. They last forever until they get broken. And it can have as many down as you want. You could have a thousand down at a time if the enemies aren't breaking them. So she has shield bow tier 1 boost. We're much faster than her. We're faster than the Renata as well. We just need to get down a little bit of poke with W. Use our superior auto attack range since Ash has the second highest base auto range in the game behind Caitlyn. Auto attack, Curie set. She's not really hitting anyone with that R. I didn't see her use her wind wall. I didn't see her use her wind wall, so I wasn't really in a big hurry. Oh, that hurts. I wasn't in a big hurry to use my R because I didn't want her to wind wall it. That's why Samir, she can be a tough matchup for Ash. Because if you launch your R early, she'll literally win wall and you get wrecked. Hit her with the slow. We don't want to die here, so we just push forward, make her walk through turret, and we'll hit her with slows. If she tries to walk through that, she'll legit just die to turret. Turret does more damage per consecutive shots against champions. That's why if you get hit by a turret shot and you're like, why did it do so much damage? Your teammate might have been heating it up. It was fully heated, now it's hitting hard. 
So instead of we walk forward away from her, and then if she walks this way, it turns into that she can't really get to us. She has to overcommit and put herself in harm's way. It's time for Rage Blade, guys. Rage Blade enhances your additional uh, damage you get from hitting a target that's already slowed. Very spicy. Ash's critical strike still no extra damage. Instead, the slow increases. Feels bad, man. That's why Rage Blade's so good on her. I'll attack key reset. Get it pushed. Awesome. Let's go ahead and launch it. They lose their turret. Now we need to rotate and leave this area. If we over push, we'll die. Ash lacks defensive mobility. She's all offensive mobility. Trying to outrun people when trying to get away from them is a bit harder than chasing them down. I'll attack Q reset. I'll attack W. We'll get the stun. Down she goes. There's probably an overly early Zillion R there. It's fine though. She probably didn't realize I had a uh, shield bow. I would like to stay, but I can't. I'm missing too much HP. I don't want to be walking around a fourth HP. I have shut down gold as well. An extra 150 if they kill me. Let's go ahead and sell that. And get this. Caitlyn isn't a horrible matchup. If you're playing Ash, sure, Caitlyn outranges you. She's the only AD carry that has higher base auto attack range because Ash is 600. Caitlyn's 650. Standard AD carry is 550. So against Caitlyn, you may not go up for raw auto pokes on her, but you can still do quite well with your Ws. And plus in team fights with your R, it's hard for her to dodge them because her net animation is so long. She lined herself up with the wall, so we land that for free. Auto attack W reset. What is this chick doing, man? I'll flash it. Auto attack Q reset. Down you go. You're, with any skill shot in League of Legends, it's not just ass and not just Ash. Any skill shot, ideally, you want them to be lined up with a wall or a turret. It makes it much easier for you to place it properly. Versus randomly throwing it out and hoping it hits. So what happened there? She had nowhere to go. Since she was already near the wall, if she tried to run away from it, she, we would get so much closer to her. She would die from our auto attacks only, and we wouldn't even need our R at that point. So no matter what she did there, she was dead. I think Scion's coming mid. Oh, no, he went top. I wasn't trying to steal his Raptor. I was trying to help him take it faster there. Good back for Rage Blade. My R's on cooldown anyway, so we don't have to feel pressure to fight here. I would rather not fight. I'm sitting on full rage blade. Pick that up. Grab a control word. Should try to always have a control word down on the map. As long as you're not delaying your first full item for it. I like to lay my blue wards defensively. It stops you from getting cheesed on your side of the map by desperate players. And they're also likely to stay there for a large chunk of the game because the enemies are not likely to break them. But it gives you more confidence to move around without being paranoid. I don't know what this chick thinks she's doing. I'm going to ghost her. That didn't quite land. Her She stuns automatically if she's in the river. It's kind of annoying. Man, chasing Kiana is absurd. I'll attack Q reset W. We, we did end up getting the kill, but man, it was uh, not free. I need to heal up. Threw my life still on uh, shield bow. I don't want Karthus R to Shrek me. Shield bow only gives so much life still, only 7%. I'll attack Q reset. I'm already back to full health. Let's get our. Our Q passive stacked. We're at our four stacks here. Full HP. We don't have sums though. We don't have R. Dragon's the move here. Ash is a team fight and not a split pusher. There's very few AD carries that can efficiently split push. 
meaning you're just out by yourself. She lacks defensive mobility, so if someone bigger or assassin light comes for you, you'll die. You need people to get in their way or to buff you up. Give you survivability. Partly what shield those for. So yeah, the only AD carries I can kind of split push is Tristana, Vayne, because they have so much mobility. And they have extremely good solo potential. And even then, for them, it's not usually optimal because... Neither one has the best defensive mobility. Like, Tristana is, has okay defensive mobility, especially for ours up, but Vayne's defensive mobility is lacking because Vayne gets a movement speed when moving towards enemy champions, but not away. So it's similar to Ash, where Ash moves really fast once you hit them, but not away. He lined up with the wall. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, that's huge. Auto attack Q, kite out the Scion. Oh, I'm dead here. Yeah, I'm literally just dead. I need to kite this guy out this way. Auto attack Q, Q reset. Trying to walk around him. I can't get through him though. If I stop hitting him, I'm just gonna die. Part of what was keeping me alive was healing off of him. In a situation where they have an, an absurdly big tank, like an Amumu, Scion, Shogat, something that has a stupid amount of HP. You need percent base damage. Your only 2% base damage options as a physical damage champion is Bork and LDR. These are your two best bets. LDR is amazing. Giant Slayer do 25% more physical damage against champions with more HP than you. Now, granted, they need to have a lot more than you, so up to 2,500 more to get that uh, maximum amount. It's worth it though. Zion, for example, has around 5k health right now, so he has over 3,000 more health than me. So I could get LDR and immediately start doing 25% more damage plus the 30% armor penetration and the other stats. Just the Giant Slayer passive alone is basically worth a full item versus uh, a tank like him. That, that's exactly what we need because he's bowling us around. I can't kill him fast enough. You guys know where to go. Auto attack Q reset. <clears throat> Trying to stand away from the wall. Zillion proactively R's me. I guess it was fine because my shield bow was technically on cooldown. My shield bow was up. It was a goofball move, but since it was down, it was actually fine. I'm not sure what her burst looks like right now with one item plus that. I don't have any armor, so without shield bow, it's a good chance I die there. Auto attack Q reset. I do no damage to him. I, as you can see, without LDR, I do nothing against Scion. It is so pathetic. <laughs> he is super fed, but still. The amount of nothing that we do to him is impressive. Ash doesn't have any percent base damage in her kit. The whole point of percent base damage is, is if they have 10,000 health, it doesn't take you 100 auto attacks to kill them. It only takes you 10, maybe 15. Got a slow on him. I do want to focus Kiana, though. I don't know where she is. Where did she go? I'm so confused. Doesn't really make sense. Apparently, their AD carry rage quit. Not a huge shocker. Gonna try to walk out of that. Yeah, she's over there. I don't want to loose leaf R her here. I'd like to get a slow on her first because she's gonna dash and dodge my R immediately. And they quit. Auto attack R, auto attack Q. Down she goes. GG's well played. I hope you guys learned something about positioning and thought process on Ash. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is King Six. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.